Most serial killers give off a chilling vibe in interviews, leaving us unnerved. However, Jeffrey Dahmer, our focus today, surprisingly came across as soft-spoken and even charming in his interviews. Yet behind this mask lies a man responsible for some of the most horrific crimes imaginable. Dahmer's story is one of unimaginable darkness, filled with gruesome acts that defy comprehension. Jeffrey Dahmer's childhood seemed ordinary at first glance. He grew up in a middle-class family in Ohio, with his father, a chemist, and his mother, a homemaker. However, his home life was far from stable. His parents frequently fought, leaving young Jeff feeling neglected and isolated. From an early age, Dahmer exhibited disturbing behaviors. He developed a morbid fascination with dead animals, often collecting roadkill to dissect in his backyard. This strange hobby foreshadowed his later crimes. Dahmer's obsession with bones and the sounds they made became an eerie pastime that went unnoticed by his busy parents. Despite these alarming interests, Dahmer's parents failed to recognize the red flags. His father dismissed Jeff's behavior as a sign of scientific curiosity, while his mother was often too preoccupied with her own issues to intervene. In high school, Jeffrey Dahmer was a loner with peculiar habits. He had few friends and often kept to himself, which made him largely unnoticed by his peers. Those who did know him didn't see any signs of violent tendencies. Instead, Dahmer was known for his odd behavior and dark sense of humor. One classmate, Durf Backdurf, who later wrote a graphic novel about Dahmer, described him as a twisted wretch whose depravity was almost beyond comprehension. Despite this, most students just saw Dahmer as a strange but harmless teenager. Dahmer's school days were marked by heavy drinking, even showing up to class reeking of alcohol. He gained a reputation as a class clown, often acting out seizures or pretending to have cerebral palsy, a behavior his classmates referred to as doing a Dahmer. These antics, combined with his growing isolation and drinking problem, hinted at deeper issues brewing beneath the surface. Escalation of Disturbing Behavior as Jeffrey Dahmer entered his teenage years, he grappled with his sexuality in a time when it was difficult to be open about such matters. He developed troubling fantasies, including a disturbing obsession with a male jogger he watched from the bushes. This growing inner conflict added to his mounting frustration and unhappiness. At home, Dahmer's life was increasingly turbulent. His parents' ongoing arguments and eventual divorce left him feeling more isolated and unhappy. School was no refuge either, as his grades dropped and his drinking worsened. Despite these challenges, Dahmer managed to graduate from high school. However, the familial and personal chaos surrounding him was a significant backdrop to his early adult life, setting the stage for his later, more troubling actions. Just weeks after graduating high school, Jeffrey Dahmer committed his first murder. He picked up an 18-year-old hitchhiker named Stephen Mark Hicks, who was on his way to a concert. Dahmer invited Hicks to his home for some drinks, but when Hicks decided it was time to leave, Dahmer panicked. In a fit of desperation, Dahmer struck Hicks with a dumbbell, knocking him unconscious, and then strangled him to death. What followed was even more gruesome. Dahmer dismembered Hicks's body, methodically cutting it into pieces. He placed the parts in plastic bags and buried them in the woods near his home. Later, Dahmer returned to the burial site, dug up the remains, and further desecrated the body. He dissolved the flesh from the bones using chemicals, crushed the bones, and scattered them. This horrific act marked the beginning of Dahmer's descent into darkness. From 1978 to 1991, Jeffrey Dahmer's killing spree continued with shocking brutality. After his first murder, he went on to kill 16 more people, escalating in violence and depravity. His methods evolved over the years, making his crimes even more horrifying. Dahmer briefly enlisted in the army from 1978 to 1981. During this time, he committed heinous acts, including the assault of fellow soldiers. Despite accusations, he was not held accountable and was eventually discharged for heavy drinking. Back in civilian life, Dahmer's crimes intensified. He targeted young men, often drugging them before killing them. His gruesome routine involved dismembering the bodies, keeping parts for himself, and using chemicals to preserve skulls. Dahmer's horrifying acts, including creating a collection of human remains, made him one of the most notorious serial killers in history. A 
arrest and discovery of crimes. Jeffrey Dahmer's criminal activities continued even after he was arrested for molesting a 13-year-old boy. Despite this, he was able to evade serious consequences and continued his gruesome killing spree. By the time police discovered his actions, he had amassed a horrifying collection of body parts, including skulls and preserved organs. Dahmer's methods were chillingly systematic. He would drug his victims, kill them, and then dismember their bodies, often keeping parts as trophies. His obsession grew to the point where he attempted to create living zombies by drilling holes into his victims' skulls and injecting chemicals, hoping to keep them in a state of compliance. Dahmer's downfall came when Tracy Edwards, a potential victim, managed to escape from his apartment. Edwards ran to the police and informed them of Dahmer's intentions. Acting on his information, officers visited Dahmer's home, where they discovered a scene of unimaginable horror. Inside, they found photographs of dismembered bodies and various remains, leading to Dahmer's arrest and the end of his reign of terror. Jeffrey Dahmer's trial began in 1992 and quickly captured national attention. He confessed to killing 17 young men and boys, detailing his horrific acts without any apparent remorse. The court found him sane and guilty, resulting in a sentence of 15 consecutive life terms in prison. During his time behind bars, Dahmer's behavior was surprisingly calm. He spent much of his time reading and reflecting on his actions. He even claimed to have undergone a religious conversion, often engaging in discussions about faith with fellow inmates. Despite his past, Dahmer was amiable and even formed some friendships within the prison system. However, not all inmates were sympathetic to him. Many found his crimes unforgivable, leading to tension in the prison environment. Dahmer's time in prison was marked by his attempts to adapt, but the shadows of his past always loomed large over him. Jeffrey Dahmer's life in prison came to a violent end in 1994, when he was murdered by fellow inmate Christopher Scarver. The attack shocked the prison system, and brought Dahmer's horrific story to a sudden conclusion. Scarver later revealed his reasons for killing Dahmer. He claimed that he was disturbed by Dahmer's behavior in prison, particularly how Dahmer would create food art that resembled severed body parts to provoke other inmates. Scarver felt that Dahmer was mocking those around him, which fueled his anger. On the day of the murder, Scarver took the opportunity to attack Dahmer and another inmate while they were working together in the prison gym. Using a metal bar, Scarver killed Dahmer, ending the life of one of America's most notorious serial killers. This violent act underscored the intense emotions surrounding Dahmer and his horrific legacy. Jeffrey Dahmer's crimes remain one of the darkest chapters in criminal history, illustrating the complexities of his psychological state and the factors that led to his horrific actions. His story raises unsettling questions about the nature of evil and the failures of society to intervene. We'd love to hear your thoughts on Dahmer. What do you think drove him to commit such unspeakable acts? With that said, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, goodbye.